Stress should be good. Uh oh, social. They're fighting? What's going on here? What is going on here? I don't understand what the stress is. Welcome to the channel. Uh, this is a new experience for me. Um, I got into it mainly because this is what my son would like to do. I uh, don't know if he'll keep that being serious, but uh, you might see him on some of the videos as we move forward to give him a chance to experience what streaming is. Um, so we're going to go with that, but I thought I would do my own stuff on the side just because, you know, sounds interesting, sounds fun, need to understand what he wants to do, so might as well give it a try watch plenty of videos online so you know why not just add to the plethora of stuff that's out there um, mainly I'll be doing playthroughs nothing too serious I'm a pretty chill gamer I don't take it too serious I don't put a lot of time into it so gonna make mistakes um, gonna screw up all the time but gonna have fun doing it and that's the whole point of this um, and I was going over and over in my head what I wanted to start with and uh, growing up uh, I played a lot of different games, some PC, some console, but uh, one of the ones that I played for a long, long time um, was Zoo Tycoon, which not really around and, and kept up anymore. So, um, but uh, Planet Zoo's out there um, on stream, and so figured that would be a good place to start. Um, I have played it a little bit, and uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to run through the careers that uh, the career scenarios that they have. And uh, I know that the first three are uh, tutorials, basically, but might as well start at the beginning just to get practice for myself and, and anybody who might be interested in that uh, going through these tutorials. So the first couple episodes are going to be the tutorials. As you can see, I've already played some of the stuff as I've been the uh, scenarios that, because I've had the game um, and played with it. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the very first scenario here. Well, we're started over new. I'm going to be playing everything um, on hard. Well, I've already done this one on hard. So let's go ahead and get this loaded up and let's just start. So for those of you that don't know what Planet Zoo is, it's a simulator uh, game. Uh, it's all based around having a zoo. I do remember Zoo Tycoon had uh, places where you can actually build a, like aquariums and marine parks and stuff like that. I haven't really delved into water exhibits in Planet Zoo yet, um, so I don't know how um, far it goes in, but I have seen things on the workshop that uh, definitely is something that's there, um, just maybe not into the same depth as uh, what Zoo Tycoon was, was doing. and so. Go ahead and hopefully get this loaded up here really quick. This is the first time I've run my computer uh, on doing all of this stuff. And don't remember it taking this long, but it is what it is. I'll be right back with you guys. Ah, hey yo, at Hema too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Flanco language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. 
But we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker, and she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. <laughs> Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma, because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. So for those of you who've ne be, never played this game, the, the career is, does follow not really a storyline, but they tried to make it seem like it's a storyline. Um, and so that was the intro, the main, that the main character who owns the zoos, the franchise per se, because that ties into um, the solo play, which then can uh, move beyond that. Um, and what we have on the screen so far right now is we have our objectives. We're going to be going through these. Most of these are all... Um, what's here and then there's locked um, when you start getting further into the careers um, the scenarios these actually are all available so you can look forward and and that is an important thing to do is to look forward and what you have to do to accomplish the task especially if you're playing on the hard, harder settings um, and then as we go through these tutorials obviously they're going to show uh, what is uh, going on uh, with all these buttons and uh, let's, let's go ahead and delve right in and so um, if I use my mouse we can scroll around and see this nice pretty zoo that they have it's actually a really nice layout for an intro and obviously they want us to go here so let's go ahead and delve in here did you know that grizzly bears also known as ursus arctos horribilis can hibernate for up to seven months a year <laughs> oh, but then again given the chance i think a lot of people would do that too <laughs> Select one of the bears, and you'll bring up its information panel. Um, so far, I've found that most of the information in this game is pretty legit. Um, I'm not going to complain too much about what's in here. So here's our bears. I want us to select one, so I'm going to pick this one right here. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double clicking on it. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. I feel they did a pretty good job with some of the animals in this. Um, I don't know. They're kind of cute. Never would get this close in real life. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next objective. Um, so you can see it's over here highlighted. Um, we'll give you the um, uh, an easy way to find some of these. They're going to have you do this, and it's going to pop over there, but there's another way to find the little location Leo, button. Leo. Or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride, although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. So obviously some very, very corny jokes. Oh, 
is our first As empty habitat. As you can habitat. see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. Uh, one of the things they don't discuss here uh, when you're playing the normal game is you have ones that cost money, which come out of uh, your zoo's finances, and then there's other ones that will actually cost you conservation credits, um, and those are key later in different um, career, and then if you do the franchise uh, option in the game, uh, those, those credits become very, very important. So let's go ahead and uh, adopt these. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? Uh, there's several ways to do this. We're gonna go here. So this is your animal storage. We're just gonna hit send to zoo and then click on here. Then do that one more time. So you'll see this one saying it's relocating. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination right, as fast yeah. as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic basically how happy they are and that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas nutrition social health habitat and enrichment luckily if you select an animal you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel which we saw earlier where you can see how they're doing that way you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed don't worry if that's a lot to remember you can always check the zoopedia for more information Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. All right, so we're gonna add, the, add what they're asking for. Um, in this, this particular scenario, because it's a tutorial, they only have what you can add. Um, I find it very helpful to make sure I'm adding the right one. I do the filters, and you click on the species. So if we went down and we found the common warthog and clicked on it, and close this, you can see which ones you have. And there's different filters you can use. Obviously, these are still going to pop up. So we have a small trough and a large water bowl. Close this out so we can see a little bit more. And we're going to put this in this corner, and we're going to put this one, and let's put it over here. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. So, because we're on this all, the category that we're in, and we can't see this one, this is covered up now. Uh, we're going to see everything that's in this category, and we're in the habitats category. Um, the small, the uh, water and the food bowl would be under the food and water tab. And then there's more over here. And then if we just wanted to see the enrichment items. And then same thing here, we have the all. We have food, toys, and climbables. And so 
really depends if you have a lot you're looking for, if you have little you're looking for, because it's a tutorial. It's little. When we get further in, there's a lot that goes in. So we'll go ahead and add the mud bath. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. So as I was saying, there's there's different ways of finding um, the exhibit. So if we go to zoo and we'll click on the animals. We have to see all the animals that we have in here, and we're going. We don't have an ostrich exhibit. I was thinking too f uh, fast ahead, um, but normally you would be able to do it. So she said it. I believe she said it was over by the hippos. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll do it this way. We'll zoom out. There it is, it's highlighted. Oh, we did have hippos. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. This is key. One of the biggest tips you get from the tutorials. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. So the gates are inside barriers. There's different types of barriers. We only have one showing up. You see it automatically puts a nice little uh, pathway in there. Right. Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Now, some of the stuff they do not... Um, really go through in the tutorial well is the different um, settings you can do with the barriers. They're down here in this corner. So like right now I have a length of 10, um, but we can go up to a length of 20, which is too much. Um, there's also a height that you can do. Um, can you make them curve? There's, there's a lot of it you got to play. And then there's, do you want a window in it? Is it one-way glass or two-way glass? There's lots and lots of settings. Um, you can also use your hotkeys depending on what you're doing. So mine is plus and minus to make it um, longer or shorter. And you can see as I do that down here at the length, it's automatically changing. So let's find this corner. There's trees in the way. And then we can also do this. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Keep a little bit of a space like that, click. Uh, we're gonna spin around. Try to keep it close to the pathway. Let's still maintain our spacing. It's gonna get really short here. Let's go there, and then we can just click on this post to complete Good it. Good work. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. So we'll go to our barriers. We'll pick this one right here and say we want it to be there glass. we go Done. adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat it's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on because it makes them happy and because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't the last thing we need to do is to add a donation box you see when guests enjoy the view of an animal they'll make a donation just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. So, 
donation boxes are inside facilities. And um, I am holding down the Z button, which lets me twist it. Oh, it's not going to let me do it there. Eh, I'm just going to put it here. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. So that's how you do one, but if we do go here to buildings, facilities, and you go to the trade center, click on it. You'll see what the capacity is. So right now we have three in here. Um, I thought it actually showed you animals it doesn't that is my bad see told you I was gonna make mistakes we'll go back to here oh no where did my exhibit go there it is um, if you send them to quarantine I do know that you can um, wait for all your animals to get While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the you habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals. So if you notice, before I got rid of that filter, it was only showing the water trough that's still suitable for the warthog but the warthog this feeding bowl and the slow feeder these were not suitable for the warthogs and that's why they weren't showing up so Good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. You'll need to rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. So a couple things on rotations. Uh, you can hold down Z and then if you're still using defaults and then move your mouse left and right to swivel it. Or if you click it single time, it will rotate 90 degrees each time. 
This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. Lovely work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food. And thanks to where you put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal Tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. It's pretty hard to lose these tutorials. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So, go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. Like I said, I'm doing this pretty fast. It's hard to lose these tutorial ones. You don't really have to worry about too much going on here. Um, I typically like to do my whole exhibit before I put in my um, keeper access mainly that's because I would then later I would then check to make sure that the the surface area of this is uh, correct and so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the keeper key here it's already on a now Bernie takes Pathway. safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> the way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. I'm going a little fast. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate's in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. I think you guys have the idea of what's going on now. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. 
We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although, given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. It's very cool how the, the pumpkin has disappeared. Um, if I remember correctly, your keepers will replace that so the enrichment stays up. Rightio, click on the terrain tab, that way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Alright, let's see. So okay this then, is what open the about. terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. So as you can see, I've already got my soil's already up, but I have too much long grass. We got enough long grass, but now we need short grass. So we're just gonna go over here. And voila! Silver star. <clears throat> They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Now then, just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. I told you, bad jokes bad jokes. Expand their social welfare and we can get a bit more detail. Ah, uh, now, they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. Right, as you can see, the peafowlers need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. <laughs> Good. 
good work on those pea fowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I was talking about earlier. So if you go to your zoo, so anywhere you see an animal pop up, um, whether it's in an objectives or something's gone on, you click on one of the... There's no loop. You click on one of the little location devices, it'll zoom over to Just you. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. In the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's, it's too hot, even with the terrible British weather. You should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. Now, before I do that, I wanted to point something out. Um, so this is the two-way glass. It's very important that in the settings for the two-way glass, you know which side it's on. So, And you can actually see it. It's really cool. So here we're looking at the guest side, and we can see. But if we were to zoom in and then spin back around, you can see that it is a little bit harder. But if I were to flip this, Oh, it's not going to let us do it. If I flip it, because we're on the tutorial, but if I flip it, it's not going to work correctly. All right, so let's go back around to see what they were saying, and let's turn on the heat map. As you can see, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. It's gonna take about three more of these. Two. to put down more? Oh, they did want us to add three. Technically, you can get away with just two. I think that's water. Uh, we'll put one back here. You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopards' terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. So, we don't want any long grass, basically. And we need to bump up the snow. We can also add some sand, so let's, let's, let's add some sand. Let's add some sand around there, and then we can do the rest with the snow. Now then, all of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should go into zoo management and then into the animals section. As you can see, this list shows you the animals' overall welfare. So, if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate button. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. So we can see here that this is, so this is basically the first time they let you loose and say, go fix things without telling you exactly what to do. Um, so I brought it up. I can see that Richmond is red, so we're going to go to Habitats. 
And we're going to go to um, our enrichment and make sure that we are on uh, what Speedy is. So Speedy is a giant tortoise. So this is what I was talking about. you got to make sure because they've turned everything on. Ah, this is the only things that are suitable. And we need to make sure that we're adding both food and toy. So let's go ahead and start with some food. Um, let's do a fruit tree spack. All right, and then we can do a frozen block. All right, so we got that one to 100%. Now let's do some toys. Um, let's do the scent marker. I like that. And then uh, be careful with the sprinkler because it can make them cold depending on uh, what your habitat is. And now we are at 100% here. The habitat's green. Stress should be good. Uh oh, social. They're fighting. What's going on here? What is going on here? I don't understand what the stress is. Interesting. They're fine. Alright, let's hit the pause button here. We're going to give them a little bit of time. That's quite interesting. Oh, you know what? We can maybe do. This is that they're trying to hide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the barrier because I have a whole bunch of money and we're gonna put in two big glass. We'll see if that helps. Let's see if that helps. Stress is going. All right. Oh, protesters are never good. Protesters are never good. But it's coming back up. Um, protesters are only bad if. Um, yeah, that was really weird that it did that. But that's fine. We figured it out. Um, protesters are only really bad if um, you have an inspector in the park and they see them. I'm going to leave it on pause while we fix some of the other animals. So we're just going to go down the list and look for anything that's not green. Oh, we don't have food, but everybody else does. We'll just make sure that we call a keeper. And we'll, uh, so it's urgently signed and they will, they'll take care of that one for us. All right, let's go over to the zebras. The zebras. And they also need some enrichment. Um, so let's get rid of this. Uh, All right, plain zebra. So for food, we can add one of these. I'm just tossing these down because it doesn't seem to really matter um, in this particular tutorial. Look at that, I've got them in one shot. So that's not going to come up until um, I unpause, but I'm also going to take care of the giraffes because they're in the same exhibit. But they need something different to get the giraffes. Lots of animals. I do have. Um, I'm trying to think, I've got everything up to this point. I might be missing one. 
one expansion, so that's why I have so many animals that I can filter through. Uh, we are looking for food, high suspender, Boom. got that. Let's put down a different toy. Uh, let's, I'm just gonna say that that's fine. 95%, we need another pillar. And they're not gonna, it's not gonna go up. That was probably a little too much. Um, you have to be aware when you're doing this on the hard, when you get further, um, they will get tired of their enrichment and um, then you have to put different enrichment in there. And uh, so that's like taking care of a real animal. Let's see if there's any other animals we had to take care of. I think that's everybody, so we're gonna hit play and see if we can't get this up. Up, green, 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 green. We have one red. Tortoises, where are the tortoises? Okay, the tortoises are all green again. Why are you starving, peacock? Or peafowl. They look like peacocks to me. Aha, there we go. We have food. We're green. What are we missing? Oh, the wolves. So they're being very picky um, on this. And so um, we're, we're doing all right, but they want some extra stuff. So we're going to go in here. I think these are gray wool, timber wool, timber wool. Where are you, timber wolf? Timber wolf, there we go. All right. We need um, a species, so we need toy. Ooh, that looks like fun. Yes, um, and I like this too. Bam, food. <laughs> These are funny, the zebra pinatas. All right, so we take care of that. So pretty much, let's go see what they want us to do. They want us to get to 90%, we're at 88. So that's why I am now being very nitpicky. Um, let's see what the, Anna, the elephants are missing. Uh, they could use a toy enrichment. Um, so let's add a toy enrichment for the elephants. And they are African elephants. I guess I could have moved in and seen that. African savannah elephants. Uh, we need a toy. We need a toy. What do you think? What do you think? I think, I think we should give them this one. Mm-hmm. Now nah, let's just give them something. Back. Uh, I dropped down. Large tire. There we go. Now we got them to 100%. Are we sitting? We're sitting. We should be close. We're still at 88%. What do we need to do? Let's go see what the tigers want. Tigers want a species toy. Of course they want a species toy. Bengal tiger. Because we didn't do that. So obviously this is just... I'm just going quick. Normally, you have to make sure you have the money and all that fun jazz. Who else would like some more ostriches? They need a food. Common ostrich. And some of this has to do with the fact that I am on hard, and so they do lose interest pretty fast. A lot of times you have to make sure you stay on top. Oh, they want need food. All right, well, we'll put that Not in there bad. too. Not bad. There we go. Gold. I think it's fair to say that you passed the first part of your training with flying colors. There's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Okay, we're going to stay in the zoo just because there's a mm. little bit more. Sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming. 
<laughs> All the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? <laughs> Don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. <laughs> so, we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy copy. <laughs> as strange as it seems, considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have, obviously. But you see, zookeeping's not for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals, but she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm hmm Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Mm, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. <laughs> All right, so that's the first tutorial. Uh, actually, it's the first scenario, but it is a tutorial. Um, so we're gonna say goodbye to our wolf friends. And uh, that will be it uh, for this episode. Um, not bad for the first video that uh, uh, I have put together that's just me um, beyond just playing around and editing. And so um, I do hope you enjoyed. Um, I don't think I'm at that point now where I will say like and subscribe, but I've already said that. So um, as you all know where those buttons are down below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.